While I was working on another QEMU RISC-V video, I was having some difficulty and I realized that I needed a debugger. And so I started looking at into QEMU documentation and I realized that um, QEMU has a really nice feature uh, called the GDB stub. And uh, it's described here in the documentation. But in a nutshell, they the authors have built in GDB, GDB server, um, and it sort of looks to you like a JTAG device, like, you, you know, you're attached to physical hardware and um, a GDB client can interact with it and, you know, step through your code like you were connected via JTAG, which is really kind of cool. So uh, I thought I would just stop what I was doing before and make a video on how to use it because it's it's not hard, but it's there. There are definitely a, a few nuances. So I wanted to demonstrate how to use a GDB client directly against QEMU and a, a RISC-V Hello World program, and then I'm uh, going to give you a bonus to show you how to make uh, the VS Code interactive debugger work. Let's get started. Let's set up a debug environment for the RISC-V-C Hello World project running in QEMU. You can watch me build this application in the video that I did up in the card on the upper right-hand side of the screen. I need to make changes to the make file, so let's do that first. I want to make sure that all the source is built with debug symbols because it was only the hello.c file that was done. So, um, you know, we might want to start in, we might want to debug in start.s as well. So let's add the G flag there. So now I'll add a make configuration called debug that will depend upon the same binary as the run target. And I'll do the same thing that I do in the run target except with just one minor change. And that one minor change is basically going to be to run QEMU such that um, we stop before anything is run. And that's what this big S flag is for. And then also that we open up a port listening for connections to the GDB stub. Um, and the little minus S means open up a TCP port 1234 listening for GDB to attach to in order to control the GDB stub. Now let's debug hello world using GDB. So I'll make clean and then I'll do a make debug. And we can see that QEMU started up uh, with those minus S flags and it's just sitting there waiting. And what it's waiting on is it's waiting on somebody to connect to port 1234 with the GDB client. So I'll switch to another terminal and I'll do that. I'll start GDB and then I'll tell it to target remote 1234. And so as you can see, uh, GDB, we're, we're in GDB and it told us what uh, line of code, or I guess what address that it stopped on before running anything. And it stopped on hex 1000. Now, that's not random. That's intentional. And in linked in the description, there's a, a very good blog post that talks about the boot sequence for QEMU. And it goes into detail that describes you know, what happens uh, basically when the machine is powered up and the very first, very, very first thing that happens before your code is entered into is um, hex 1000 is entered into. And there's a few assembly instructions that are um, executed that uh, basically formulate the bootloader. Um, and I'm not going to go into that here, but I just wanted to make note that to see 1000 here basically tells me that this GDB client has successfully connected to the GDB stub in QEMU and is ready to execute. So what can we do here now? If you'll recall, uh, we have, of course, a function called main uh, in our hello C, and we also have a label called start 
in the start.s file. So why don't we just set up a breakpoint for start so that we can see entering into our, um, our little start assembly uh, bootstrap routine. So now I'm going to hit C for continue. Let me go ahead and make this a little, a little bigger. And we can see that we hit the start breakpoint. And indeed, we have our um, load address stack top where we're initializing the stack pointer. And um, you know, of course, we can look at the code and see this line 9 right here. In GDB, we can also just say L for list. And it'll kind of give us a listing, a source code listing around line nine to, to you know show us what other source codes lurking uh, and this is why I added the G flag to the assembler because I wanted to be able to step into the assembler in GDB just like you know you'd step into C or other source so that you could um, you know see the code and, and step through it as well and to step through it you would just do uh, I think it's s for step and see so yeah we're now on line 10 and then step again and this is about this instruction is about to do the jump into main, which is in hello.c. So we can do another step. And now we're at main. And if I just do list again, now we can see our C code where we're putting in, we're doing a put string on, on hello world. Uh, and, and in fact, if we just um, continue, so we basically told QEMU to continue running the program, and if I go to the uh, if I go to this console, which is the console where we started QEMU, you can see that Hello World is printed to the console, which is exactly how it's supposed to work, um, which tells us that um, GDB the GDB client released the GDB stub in QEMU to continue running, and obviously Hello World got printed. Okay, so I'm going to terminate GDB, the GDB client. And I'm also going to terminate QEMU. Again, that's Control A C and then quit. And so now let's go ahead and set up VS Code for integrated debugging. So to do that, I'm going to create a launch.json file to create a configuration that will launch the debugging process. So we're going to set up a configuration, and we're going to name this configuration uh, debug risk 5. And this is going to show this debug risk 5, this is going to show up in the dropdown, uh, the debugger dropdown of VS Code. We want to tell it the type uh, of debugging we're doing, which is C. We want to request a launch of this process, a separate process, because this is actually going to launch the GDB clients that will be doing the connecting to the GDB stub. Of course, we tell it what program we're executing. It's the one that we built, the ELF. We're going to give it the GDB program to execute. And so this GDB program is in my path. I have it installed from Homebrew. It's in my path, and so I don't need to give the full file path specification, but in MI debugger path, you could give it the, spe the, the absolute path if GDB was not in your path. So the debugger server address should be localhost 1234 because that's what um, the QEMU stub will be listening on. This stop at entry uh, setting here, it, it probably doesn't do anything since we're actually going to be telling QEMU to stop at the beginning with the minus big S flag, but I put it in here because it, it doesn't hurt anything. And finally, before running the GDB client, um, we want to run the task called run QEMU, which is a another task that we are about to create in the uh, task.json file. So now I want to create a file to define our tasks. And so we'll create a task, a couple of tasks. One of them we're going to call it build. 
And this build task, all it's going to do is it's just going to run make because we obviously need the ELF created before we actually enter the debugger. This will automatically create an updated ELF for us. Now create a problem matcher, um, which all it really will do is it will stop this process from running if there if there are errors in the source code when it when make runs. Um, and what I can do is I can just give it the default pro um, I can give it the default problem matcher for GCC, which is of course what we're running to build all these things. So next task is the task that'll actually run QEMU. And again, it will be a shell uh, type task. And so here, what I want to do is pass the same command to start QEMU as in the make file when running the make debug target, which is what we just did. I can't run make debug here because we're not debugging make, we're debugging QEMU. And so if I were to just put make debug in here, that's actually starting the make process. And so we'd actually enter into debugging make and we don't wanna do that. We wanna enter into debugging QEMU. So we have to kind of repeat the same command here. Now, I guess before I type the command, uh, there is this little echo statement that I'm adding here. Um, this is not just a nicety, as we'll see in a minute. There's a specific reason why I'm doing this, but let's carry on with just um, typing in the QEMU statement. Again, it's basically the same statement as um, in the make. And there's our S flags. And then we pass the, uh, the ELF. Now, we're going to put a dependency in here on this task to the build task that we just created, right? Because we need to run the build to get the ELF created before we actually run QEMU. So that this depends on will do that for us. We want to run QE, QEMU in the background because again, it's going to create the GDB stub server process for us to connect to. It sort of needs to be fully started up and running in, in the background. All right. So now there's a strange bit I'm going to do here. Um, and I got this technique from uh, examining a project in the free RTOS project. And the link that I used is in the description. Um, in order for the VS Code runner to know when QEMU is started, I'll create a problem matcher. Now, the problem matcher, spe the specific problem matcher is not really relevant. It's, we just need to create one. Uh, and the sole job of the matcher is to look for the echoed QEMU started string that was up in the command line. Um, and once the matcher sees that string, then the VS Code runner will continue to run the next step, which is running the GDB client defined in launch.json. If you don't do this, basically the runner is just gonna hang because it doesn't know that this process is ready and running in order to run the GDB client. So, and the way it's done is with this statement right here, this ends pattern, and you can see we're gonna put in QEMU started, which matches the string that's up on the uh, line 18 command uh, echo. All right, so we have those two files created. Now, those files, uh, I created them in the root. They don't, they shouldn't be in the root. They actually need to be in the dot VS code directory. So I'm going to go ahead and stick them in there. And if we go over to the debugger, you can now see we have debug risk five sitting in here in the dropdown. And of course that matches this launch.json uh, configuration that we put in here. So uh, let's set a breakpoint actually. Let's just set a breakpoint in say, uh, let's, let's do that in main. So let's go to main. And, oh, I already have a breakpoint right there. So all we have to do is hit run.
And as you can see, we've entered into the VS Code Interactive Debugger and we have stopped at the first line in main. And so this is going to work just like any debugging any old application. Um, but of course, note that we are running QEMU. We are running our hello.elf application that was built with Make and loaded into the firmware of QEMU, uh, and, and we're doing it remotely over a TCP uh, connection. But you know, you can you can step, you can examine variables, and uh, you know you can do a step into, and I'm going to step over this a little bit. Now watch down here at the bottom because we're going to put the first character of our hello world, and as soon as we execute this, we should see some text down here. Yep, and there's the H for our hello world. Of course, if you keep stepping, you'll see the whole hello world appear. So interactive debugger working just, just as expected. Um, you can examine registers, see what all the registers are. You can see the stack, et cetera. Very, very useful. So if you're used to using uh, VS Code, the VS Code integrated debugger, uh, this is a very handy way for you to look at problems that you otherwise um, can't easily identify. Hope you find this useful. Please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.